Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to look at two different situations, and they're both kind of similar, so they work well together. Um, but again, what we're going to be doing is using the method of joints in order to determine the various stresses on the internal members of the truss. Okay, so we begin um, by thinking about the truss here as just a single object. So it's just a big triangle here. And then what we want to do is try to figure out what are the external forces. And we've got the 300 pound load right there. And let's look at point A. And at point A, it's another roller bearing. See how it looks like a little set of roller skates, which means it's only gonna provide a normal force like this. And so if we go up to B, then um, B is going to have to counteract A. So we'll have a BX here. And then we're going to have to have here a BY value. All right. And uh, this one's pretty simple. So looking at the horizontal bits, looking at the vertical bits, we can see right away that uh, BY has to be that um, 300 pounds. Okay. And we see that BX and B and A have to be the same thing. Okay. Now we don't know what A is or BX just yet, but we know they're, they're equal and opposite. Okay. Um, so we've got the horizontal forces, the vertical forces. Now let's think about the moments. Okay. So BY and 300 produce a moment couple. Uh, which is equal to the magnitude of the force times the distance between them. The distance between them is four. And so we're going to have four times 300. And that's going to be counteracted by the other force couple. Let me get my head out of the way. A and BX. And they're separated by three. So I'm just going to put here three A. Okay, and uh, so that tells us, we do the math on that, and that tells us that A is going to have to be 400, and so is BX, okay? So now we've got all of our externals, and we can move to thinking about what's happening internally. And the first thing that you want to look for are the zero force members, all right? And so... You can see here that we've got a continuous two pieces, all right, that come together in a nice straight line. And so that third line on here, this is a zero force member. Whoops, wrong marker. That's a zero force member. So CA is zero. It doesn't do anything to help us with the load that we have right now, okay? Um, what would what would a zero force do in practice? Well, if you're using two two pieces, DC and CB, it's probably because a really long one was either impractical or too expensive, um, or you know something else like that. And so he was like, "Well, we're going to put these two pieces together." Now, as we're talking about these trusses, we have not dealt with the weight of any of the components. All we're dealing with is what happens to the components based on some applied load. So in reality, if you put two pieces there, they're going to try to sag, okay? And that is going to affect your structure. And so you can kind of imagine this thing might try to fold up just a little bit somehow if, if C was able to sag. So we need the piece CA just for the sole purpose of keeping the point C where it belongs. Okay. Um, so in real life, that's, that's the point of, of having that one there. In terms of this particular 300 pound load, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. And actually, no matter what load we put on this thing, that it's going to be zero. Okay. All right. Let me get rid of mm, some stuff. Clean this up real super quick. 
Okay, um, so we found our Zero Force member. What we need to do now is uh, sort of go around this thing and try to figure out what's going on. So let's move to point A. I guess we'll just start with A. And so we make a free body diagram. Okay. And I like to label each one because there's going to be a lot. I mean, not, not in this one, but there could be a lot. So you need whatever you can do to keep things straight. You want to. Here's our actual force A, just like this. And then we know that BA, which is this guy up here, is going to be coming down this way. And we know that AD is got to be coming this way. So what do we learn about that? We learn right away that DA is going to have to be pointed. Whoops. It's going to have to be pointed this way here. There's DA. And that's going to have to be equal to A, which we found already to be 400. Okay, that's it. It's done. But let's look at BA now. Um, BA, the vertical one, we've got another one of these situations where if it pulls up, there's nothing to counteract. There's nothing pulling down. If it pushes down, there's nothing to counteract pushing up. <clears throat> and so that what we learned from that is that BA is also equal to zero. Okay, so regarding this particular <clears throat> structure and this 300 pound force, uh, we don't need that component BA. So why do we even have that component? Okay, well, again, it's because in reality, A, where it's on the wall, would have some weight and it would just fall down. If we didn't have CA and we didn't have BA, uh, it, would, it would fall, okay? And um, then our structure would come apart. So we talk about BA being a zero force member in this case um, because it doesn't contribute anything that involves this 300 pound external load. All right. Let's move over to D. Okay. All righty. Here we go. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in um, DC, the direction for DC. DC runs this way. Okay. Okay. Um, so if A is to the right, sorry, if A is to the left at point A, then DA is, mm, boy, I'm struggling. Here is DA. On that side, at the other end, it's in the opposite direction over there, which means we have to put this guy right there. There's DA, and we know what DA is. Um, so we have no choice. Uh, we have to, we see that DC is going to go right there. That way we have a component to offset DA. And we could go ahead and, uh, we can go ahead and work that one out. Okay, we need this angle here. And um, hmm, so let's go back and see what we got here. Oh, I see. Okay, so this across here is four, and this is a three. And so that means um, we've got a three, four, five triangle right there. Okay, so we say DA is equal to DCX, which is going to be DC um, onto four fifths. Okay, and then if we work out what that is, what we're going to get is uh, that DC works out to be 500. Okay. Just like that, because DA we already know is 400. Having worked that out just a second ago. Okay. Um, all right. Now we're going to need 
Oh, well, we got our 300 pound force. <laughs> I just forgot to draw that on the diagram. Maybe some of you were like, what are they going to do with the 300? Okay. Uh, anyway, there's that, the 300 right there. Okay. <clears throat> mm, I'm trying to decide if I should make a Spartacus joke here or not. Um, yeah, I, get I don't think I will. Okay. There we go. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, we're done, really. Okay, we're we're done because if DC here is 500, then that means this guy is also 500. Okay, so now we've got all our pieces put together. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. All right, so there you go. Um, again, start by thinking about the thing as a whole. Get your external forces, the applied, the reactive, then move inside, start with the joint, just pick one, try to pick a simple one, and move one joint to the next. All right, now let's look at one that's pretty similar to it. Uh, okay, which is this guy. And uh, just to give you a little preview, in the last one, there were two pieces that were zero force members, two pieces that didn't really have anything to do with the loading. This one's going to have some of those also. Okay, so. Let's get after it here. First, we want to start out by just thinking about this thing as a box. It has no internal pieces to it. Figure out what the external forces are. Um, a, there's that 800 pound force. B, it's a kind of roller bearing. So there's only going to be, uh, only going to be the upward force there. C, okay, we've got um, the 200 is our external force. And then we get over to D, and D, we're going to have to have something this way. So there's our DX and something this way. So we've got a DY on there as well, okay? So that's all the external forces identified. Now we got to work them out, okay? So we got a three, four kind of thing going on again. Um, so thinking about what's happening horizontally, we can see then that DX is 200. I think this is a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, and then we've got DY is up, B is up. So let me write that down, dy plus b minus 800 is equal to zero. So there's my vertical forces, right? Um, so I've got two unknowns, dy and b. So I'm gonna have to go to another resource, which is the moments, okay? All right, dy is one of my unknowns. Um, I could put my pivot anywhere. Let's put the pivot um, at d right up here, okay? So if we sum our moments around D, set that equal to zero. Now I get the 800 is in line with my point D. So there's no moment from that B. The line of action for B is out four feet. So I've got four B here. And then uh, C is in the line of action. Its line of action goes through D. So no moment from C, no moment from DY, no moment from no moment from dx. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. B is zero. Okay. So we don't need, we don't need B in this thing. So we've learned dx. We've learned B. And since B is zero, then that means that dy has to be 800. Okay. Alrighty, well, let's change our perspective. And take a look at what's happening inside. All right. Um, since B is zero, then that means that CB is zero. And it also, since there's nothing over here on this side, pushing or pulling, that means AB is also zero. 
Okay, so all that really matters is that <laughs> what's left of that triangle. Okay, and um, again, we in real life we need those other components to help it maintain its shape and stay in its position. Um, but you know, if we were in outer space or something, if we didn't have any gravity to contend with, uh, we wouldn't need those two components there. Okay, let's uh, begin with then. A All right, and we know we're going to have AC is this way somehow. We've got the oops. I'm I'm really struggling with that particular mistake today. There's 800, okay? And that means we need an upward component. So here is AC, just like that. And um, again, it's on a three, four, five geometry. And uh, which one's four, which one's three? Four is horizontal. Here's our three. And this side is five, just like that. So we can, we can write down that... Um, the downward component 800 is going to have to be ACY, which is AC onto uh, three fifths. Okay. And so um, AC then turns out to be, oops, I'm looking at the wrong paper. Sorry. Awkward silence. Hang on just a second. Ah, right. Okay, so um, take 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 a look there. Let's let's think about this AC for just a second. Um, because because I I've made a mistake actually here. Which is why I was like, oh, what's going on? Because I my brain lurched ahead and was like, hmm, this doesn't seem right. So let me let me try to let you in on what I'm thinking about. Okay. So A B should go this way, which is here. However, we know that's zero. So if we do have A C, then that means there's no component. I mean, AC has a horizontal component to the right. There is no component to the left, okay, to balance it out. And that actually is going to mean that we can't, we can't have AC at all. It's a zero force member, okay? And so AD, which is up here, is going to have to be equal to 800, okay? Just like that. Okay. Now, let's take a look at, at C. Um, well, with C, we know that the CB doesn't do anything. AC doesn't do anything. And so that means that uh, DC is going to have to be... Oh, see, I did it again. C is going to have to be here. Okay, or, or CD rather. So that's over here like this. And that's going to have to be equal to 200 to make all that work out. Okay, there we go. All right, you know, you know you're going to, you're going to screw up at some point like I did. And, uh, but, you know, if you're careful with your analysis, um, the, the ship will write itself. You'll be like, oh, shoot. And you can go back and you can, you can fix that. And then you can know, you know, maybe how to avoid it in the future. All righty. So anyway, um, there you go. So there's two great examples for you.